Hello! Um, I still have some Christmas decorations up here and there because there is no way I'm gonna get through the corona winter without any Christmas lights or Christmas decorations. So, even though it's February, it's still Christmas feeling in here. So, in this video we will be talking about inky. In the previous one we talked about how to draw the manga pages with a pencil or how to do the sketches digitally. If you have not seen the video, I would highly recommend you check it out and come back to this one right after. So you might actually have seen me inking already. There is a whole video up of me doing it, which is my most watched video for some reason. It's not especially good, really. So in this video we will be talking on how to exactly do it, maybe give you some helpful tips and tricks. This is all the stuff you need. But let's take it step by step. I gotta say, I love traditional inking with a pen nib and ink. It's really fun, most of the time. But I'm not that good at it. Not terrible, but also not especially good. So I switched to digital inking recently, where you can simply redraw a line. It does feel a little bit like cheating, but I don't really care as long as the pages look good. So I will be splitting this step of the manga creation process into two videos. In this video I will be talking about traditional inking and then the next one I will be talking about the digital inking. Because otherwise this video would simply be too long. But don't worry, I will try to upload the other video actually next week. So there will be two videos this month. It will be a lot of work. But... So, back to the materials. If you use a quill, you will need a holder. These usually come in this shape and form. You can fit in the white and the round pen nibs. Sometimes you break the middle part because you push the pen way too far in. Having a thicker pen holder with some cushion is easier on your wrist. Inking for hours can cause your fingers and your wrist and even your elbow to hurt long term. Carpal tunnel, carpal tunnel, carpal, carpal tunnel is a pretty common sickness for artists, especially if you ink. That's why it is really important to protect yourself. So having a pen nib that is a little bit wider is better and also there are special cushions you can buy to slide over your pen holder. When I ink all day my pinky starts to hurt weirdly because it just gets squeezed in. And this is another reason why I switched to digital inking because there for some reason my wrist doesn't hurt quite as much only after I have been drawing for a really long time. Anyways, there is no use for a pen holder if you don't have a proper pen nib. Here are the usual ones used by manga artists. G-Pen. G-Pen is used by most shonen mangaka. You can really vary the thickness of your lines, which will make your drawing pretty dynamic. If you draw like this, the line is thick. If you draw like this, the line is thin. It is especially useful to add three-dimensionality to your drawings. I personally don't use the G-Pen very much. For some reason I cannot really get to draw thin quick lines with it. For that I prefer to use the Maru pen. It's mostly used by shoujo mangaka, but not only of course. You can draw pretty fine lines with it, which is especially useful for hair or when the characters in your panel are especially small. People say it's most difficult to use, but I for some reason find it easier. It is the pen I use the most when I do ink traditionally. Then there is the Saji pen. This one I used like never. It's most easy to control as it doesn't get caught in the surface due to its round tip, but it has barely any line variation. You can still use it for speech bubbles or the panel lines. And there are artists who use the Saji pen as their main pen nib, like Kamome Shirahama, who draws Witch Hat Atelier. And dude, it looks insane! Some artists throw away their pen nibs after inking just one page, so they use a new pen nib for each page. I personally find the Maru pen really difficult to handle when it's new. It only starts to work for me after I have inked like 10 pages. So whenever I have to use a new pen nib, it is usually a struggle. But again, this preference really varies from person to person. And also it depends on the brand you use. Okay, I got your pass right there. 
Actually, there is a reason for why I was struggling with the new pen nibs and I only figured it out after recording the video. When you have a new pen nib, it's often covered in an oil film to protect it from rusting while in storage. To remove the oil, you have to warm up the pen nib with a lighter. And I knew that, only I didn't know that you have to do it until the pen nib changes its color to a more yellowish color, I guess. Otherwise, it doesn't really make a difference. Just be careful not to touch the pen nib afterwards. Don't burn yourself or your house down. Back to the video. And sometimes the pen nibs from the same brand up end up being different. So yeah. So yeah, there are a lot of different factors going into inking with pen nibs. If you want to try out these pen nibs for yourself, you can buy some beginner sets online and just try out what works best for you. I will put some links for the brands and the materials I mentioned here in the description box. This video is not sponsored by any of the brands I mentioned, just so you know. Those are just the things that I use or I have heard about. Of course, there are many more pen nibs than I just mentioned. You can also just use some German or whatever brands and just try out whatever you can find. You don't have to stick to the Japanese pen nibs. In the end, any material can work. When you use pen nibs, you obviously also need ink. There is a lot of variety, but usually Indian ink is the best you can get as it's properly black and it doesn't fade out with time. In Bakuman, the manga, they use this ink. I've had it for a while but haven't tried it out yet. And just for this video I did and actually it has become my favorite. Before that I used to like this ink because it did work better with the paper I used. But then I noticed that it's actually pretty thick and drawing quicker lines is a little bit more difficult with it. I'm not sure you can get any of these two in Germany though. If I can find a store that sells them here in Germany, I will put the link in the description box. One brand that most German artists use is the Deleter ink. It's definitely easier to buy and easier to find. There are different numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 on it. All have different properties, some are waterproof, some are not, some are thicker, some are thinner, some of them are Indian inks, some of them are not. Basically, it's impossible to tell what ink is the best, as it all depends on your preference. Some artists prefer more thicker inks, which are waterproof, some others prefer thinner, non-waterproof inks, because one advantage of <laughs> non-waterproof inks is that you can wash them off your hands, because this finger, sorry, will always be black here, at least mine is. The ink is not too expensive, but you have to make sure to store it correctly to make it last longer. There are two tips to make your ink last really long. First, store it in the fridge. It might look weird, but this is where you best keep it. Second, the ink can really dry out when you have the jar open next to you all the time. So, one tip I stole from a friend is to use a pipette Take out some of the ink and transfer it into a contact lens jar. And then use this contact lens jar to ink while you can store the big jar in the fridge meanwhile. You don't have to though. If you pay attention to always closing the jar when you're not using it, you should be fine as well. Dip the pen into ink until it covers this hole. Don't dip it too deep or you might drip on the paper. Another advice I can give you for when you ink with pen nibs, use a paper towel to clean the nib regularly. You can even dip it into some water and then dry it off. Clean the pen nib regularly to prevent it from clogging while you ink. If it does clog, you can still just clean it. Make sure you dry it off properly because it will rust over time and then you can't use it anymore. Inking with pen nibs is not easy, so be patient. It does take some practice. You can start by just drawing some parallel lines or circles to get a feeling for it. Always ink your page from upper left corner to down right corner if you are right-handed in order not to smudge the ink. If you are left-handed then obviously it's from the upper right corner to the down left corner. I still manage to smudge inks all the time because I don't pay attention and I am impatient. If you make mistakes, it's not the end of the world. Unlike with the digital drawing, you cannot just like read your line. Once it's on the paper, it's on the paper. But it's not the end of the world because there are ways of still correcting things. There is whiteout, for example, where you can just draw 
over it or you can correct some lines later digitally once you have scanned them in. If pen nibs sound like too much work for you, you can use microns instead. Quite a few German artists use them and get amazing results with them. They are a lot easier to control but have not much line variation. So you have to add line thickness by drawing multiple times over the line. When you erase your underneath sketch after inking, then some lines might get erased along as well. Some microns are more prone to this than others. My preferred brand is Sakura Microns, where I have noticed the least erasing out of all the microns I have used so far. When drawing my manga pages, I don't use the microns for characters, but for the background. I only, I only ink characters with them when I draw commissions at conventions because then I usually have to use watercolor paper and watercolor paper and pen nibs do not work well together. Microns on the other hand usually work with a lot of different papers. Most of them are also water and copic proof and they are easy to bring along. And there's basically no drawing time, so just smudging is almost impossible with microns. So yeah, they are pretty useful. I use thicker microns for drawing my speech bubbles and panel lines. Of course you can use pen nibs for panel lines and even backgrounds, but first you will need this kind of ruler if you use your ruler for your backgrounds. Some people don't. And secondly, you will need incredibly high skill. Patience, I guess. If pen nibs and microns sound really boring to you, then you can properly challenge yourself by inking your pages with a brush. Use Psycho. Takehiko Inoue painted Wagabond with a brush. When I watch this video, I start asking myself why I wasted my youth watching K and J drama instead of practicing my inking skills. You wasted your youth, Orshi. Even if you're not a god and decide not to use the brush for inking, you can still use it to fill in the blacks. I used to fill in my blacks mostly digitally after scanning because it does save you some time. But you can also do it here. You can actually do it with a brush pen, which is a little bit easier to use than a brush with the ink. Brush pens do have a brush-like tip, but you don't have to constantly dip them into ink. The ink comes on its own and smudging accidents are less likely as well. They are more thin and more thick ones. Those two are my favorites. But this one has been more and more difficult to find. I like to use it for black hair. You can use washi tape to help you. Just make sure you weaken the glue a little bit beforehand so you don't damage the paper and the pigments when you rip it off. I used this brush pen for inking characters on an A3 format a couple of times. So maybe you can even use it as your main inking tool, I don't know. With proper skills you probably can use a fucking fork for all I know. Okay, let's see. Um. I mean... It is an eye. There are no limits. Wait, there is a limit. Do not use addings for ink. After time, they will leave yellow stains on your paper. No, seriously, I mean it. Like, don't, don't ruin your manga pages. If all the materials I mentioned so far are too expensive for you, just use a black ballpoint pen instead. Or even just pencil. There have been some mangas which were drawn only with a pencil, with no ink. To try out different materials, you can try and ink the same drawing with different materials. This way you will see a clear difference between lines, what materials you feel more comfortable with and what look you like the best. I talked about what paper I used in the last video. It's important not to use printer paper, especially if you work with pen nibs. Okay, this sounded somewhat confusing, as I do use printer paper, only laser printer paper. What I mean is, don't use this cheap copy paper you get everywhere. It's fine for practicing or storyboarding, but it does not work with ink and quilts. Also remember how I switched to a different ink while working on this video? I did the same with paper! While this paper probably still works great with microns, it does bleed a bit with more liquid ink. So I will be switching to the leader manga paper after all, if I go back to traditional inking. It's more expensive though. So yeah, 
Paper is a whole another issue. I wish I had this solution for you, but unfortunately there isn't. It's all about personal preference, again. Depending on how you ink your manga pages, the atmosphere in your story can really vary a lot. You can go more heavy-handed with thicker lines and shadows. You can hatch your shadows or keep things very clean or have very thin lines and a lot of details. It all depends on the look you're going for. When inking, try not to stick to the sketch too perfectly. Actually, feel more free to maybe correct lines if you see that they should be placed somewhere else. This way it will be a little bit easier to have more loose dynamic lines. You can tune your paper to fit the natural movement of your hand. But be careful not to smudge the ink. Some artists claim it's important to be able to draw like in any direction without turning the paper. But I personally think it's just another unnecessary rule. Some god tier like manga artists turn their paper just like if you like into challenging yourself or this kind of masochistic stuff please go for it but don't feel like you're a bad artist because you do turn your paper now that i talked so much about traditional inking i want to go back to it again man i miss it inking with pen nib sounds like a lot of work and the beginning is not the easiest but once you master it, it's really, really fun. I haven't even completely mastered it and I still enjoy it a lot. I will probably go back to it from time to time just for the fun of it. I don't know. I just confused myself with this video. And this is all I can think of for traditional inking. I hope this uh, helps you out. I will try to upload the video on digital inking next week. I can't make any promises because life is busy and sometimes unpredictable, but I will try my best. If you don't want to miss the video, please follow me by pressing the bell button down there, like, you know, subscribe, and then there's like a bell, because like subscribing is whatever. Just, 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 just press the bell, you know, activate the bell, you know what to do. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook if you want to see I don't know, work in progress or me ranting about stuff. All the links you can find in the description box below. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!